There aren't the words to explain the life I lived over the last few months. Within it all, I experienced the intensities and extremes of life. I felt love and fear, understanding and confusion, hope and hopelessness, joy and sadness, light and darkness, forgiveness and anger. I've taken risks and opened my heart. And I've also contracted in many ways, feeling the urge to close myself off. There is so much beauty in the duality my life has been bringing in. And there's also been a lot of ugliness. I split open in a million ways, over and over. And my whole reality shifted in such a way, I don't think I can ever go back to my old perspective. I'm still trying to put the pieces back together, one piece at a time trying to navigate existence with new eyes. In a way, this journey has felt very lonely. Although truthfully, I think it has just shed light on the ways I already felt alone before. Maybe my need to be seen or understood hurts me more than it helps. I don't know. The one thing I do know for certain is that I know nothing. I think that is part of the hero's journey surrendering into the unknown, diving headfirst into the human experience, uncertain of what lies ahead, only to find myself over and over, again and again. I just wanted to share kind of how I've been feeling in the post process of integration after all that I've experienced the past few months. It's very easy to see these experiences to be like a quick fix or um, the easy way for healing. And for me, after experiencing all of those things and coming back to my home and to my real life, it has been a pretty difficult transition for me. A lot of old patterns and cycles have been coming up for me to witness and see, which is beautiful because I see it as an opportunity for me to heal those and break those patterns and cycles and those ways of thinking. But a lot of times it's a painful process to <laughs> look at those things. I've been feeling a lot of darkness and shadow and depression recently. A lot of days I just feel very overwhelmed. It's been hard for me to connect with people and to show up as a person in society. Um, when I first came back from Costa Rica, I was forgetting appointments that I had and just not showing up for things, which is really out of character for me. It was just hard for me to like keep up with messages from people and the internet and my work and my clients and I felt very overwhelmed to the point that like the days that I had off I just wanted to lay in bed and avoid everybody and everything and it's just you know that cycle of darkness that seems to come visit me every winter it's just felt extra intense this year and it's only been the beginning of winter. A lot of like wounds and shadows have been coming up and insecurities and old aspects of myself that I thought were gone. I'm getting to look at deeper layers. I think it's something that needs to be spoken about and shared and I, I've noticed like in a lot of like my friends and inner circle a lot of people right now are experiencing this heaviness and darkness whether it's on a small scale or a big scale whether it's internal or external i feel that a lot of us are collectively going through some heavy stuff right now and i feel like for me sitting in ceremony sitting like breaking myself over and over again in a short period of time and just a matter of a couple months and coming back to reality and trying to integrate myself into this world as this new version of myself has been just a crazy adjustment 
I've been sitting with the idea that, um, you know, a lot of times when I go to these places, my heart's cracked open. And when I sat in Mexico in ceremony, my intention was to open my heart to receive and experience and witness perfect love, perfect unconditional love. And I felt like it cracked me open to all the places that I was closed off to giving and receiving and seeing that love. A lot of those like fears and blockages were really like painful, intense things to look at. And they're a lot of the reasons why like I had closed my heart in the past and still when those things show up makes me want to close my heart. I've been seeing this process of learning that to open my heart in a way I have to break it open and sit and look at these dark things. I have been sitting with a coach over the past little bit that, and she's been helping me integrate a lot of this work that I've done. And we talked about these dark, depressive feelings. She firstly said like, what are we calling it? Like, how are we identifying with it? If I'm labeling myself as a depressed person or I have depression or I'm ex experiencing depression or I am depressed, that is me identifying with this feeling rather than I am feeling depression. And then looking even deeper into what does depression even mean and as we talked about it, she shared with me the perspective of depression being a feeling of wanting to avoid darkness. You see a lot of times when people struggle with dark depression, they want to end their life or they don't feel the desire to continue living. And that is at a point where these feelings are so overwhelming that you want to escape and that's the ultimate escape. And so being able to look at it from that perspective has really helped me. I know everybody experiences it on different levels in different ways, but for me to unidentify with the depression and say when I'm feeling depression, it's just showing me that I'm maybe avoiding a deep feeling. When these dark feelings come up, instead of trying to make them go away, switching my mindset to what if they come to visit me every week? for the rest of my life, or every day, or every month, or every winter, however often they're coming, and how can I sit with them? What can I do to sit with them? And choosing to invite them in and look at them, I've noticed when I continuously push them out and want to escape from these feelings, they get darker and I get caught in this cycle spiral like downward spiral of darkness and hopelessness and stuckness and when I allow myself to sit with them it doesn't necessarily make them go away but I'm able to see in these like deeper parts of myself and these truths that I was unable to see by trying to avoid them that has been my process as I've been integrating these darker feelings and these newer aspects of myself and also old, old aspects of myself that are coming up. I believe that they're coming up to the surface for me to heal and I think that is what I came on earth to do is to help shift myself and my own personal old cycles and my generational ancestral cycles to shift because ultimately we want to shift as a collective we want to shift out of this dark shit that humanity has been experiencing for ages and that starts from within i truly believe that nothing outside of me is going to change until i do my own work and look at my own darkness and my own shadows and my own hurt and my own fears and my own beliefs 
that aren't serving me and I know it's not going to change and shift the whole world. I truly believe that it can help change my reality and it can help change the people that I'm close to and it will help affect and influence the people that they're close to and you know it's this domino effect or the flower of life that continuously moves outwards and I think that's why this work is so important but I also think it's something that rarely gets spoken about in the shitty dark process of going into the depths to find yourself and to meet yourself where you're at and to look at the truth it is I feel like we live in a culture in a society that doesn't support that we live in a culture and society that actually encourages us to be out of touch with who we really are and it's it feels dense and hard and we have to constantly create habits regularly to stay out of these cycles and patterns because of the density of this world and where we're at in the way that society has been set up. I have learned that <laughs> I felt like for so long in my life I have been wanting to escape the collective and escape society and I've always like identified as alien because I did not feel that I wanted to connect with these people and I wanted to just like leave and do my own healing work because the world seems so awful and through this process i've been starting to see that like i am human and as a human whether i like it or not i am connected to the collective of humanity and so i think as a human it is my responsibility to do my part and show up and do my work and look at these deeper truths and that's where i'm at in my life and i feel like it's a privilege that I get to look at these things and be at a safe place that I'm choosing to look at these darker aspects. I hope that it can help me in my life and I hope that it can add just, even if it's the smallest form of goodness, I hope it can add that to the world. And I have been reflecting on this passage from this book I have been sitting with for the past couple years. It is called Womb Awakening. As you can see, it's pretty beat up because I've spent a lot of time with it, marking it up and reading it and reflecting with it. It's from a passage that talks about opening to love. It's talking about relationships specifically, but I feel that it relates beyond relationships. It can relate to any aspect of your life, whether it's a situation or an environment or a belief or a feeling or your relationship with yourself. And it says, at its deepest level, we have entered the illusion we are independent from Gaia and from the great womb that birthed us and will receive us on our departure. We can begin by expressing our need for love to others, not in a demanding way, but in a softly vulnerable sharing of what our heart is truly feeling and desiring. We can also express our gratitude for Gaia and for others who support us and open into our interconnection with nature, plants, and animals, as well as humans. There is a risk that our vulnerable need for love will not or cannot be met. And usually we react to this by shutting off our needs, denying them, developing spiritual theories, and make the need and desire for love wrong or egoic. Instead, on the path of love, we can keep opening our hearts to this deep foundational need to love, to give love, to receive love, to touch others physically and soulfully, and to be touched physically and soulfully. Even if our need isn't met, we can still keep opening our heart and souls and reaching, allowing ourselves to feel the deep grief, rejection, abandonment, separation when our desire for love isn't met and to still keep opening. In this expansive blossoming, we are opening into the arms of love herself. We do not have to make demands of the other person or project our anger on them or force them to choose something they do not want or are not ready for. We can honor where they are at 
and their free will and still say, I choose love. Even if that means leaving the relationship or letting go of the idea that they were the one and grieving any feelings of betrayal or loss. Holy love includes our needs. It does not exclude them. Even if they are wounded, messy, childish, heartbreaking, clingy, this opens the doorway to our precious inner child who did not receive the love he or she needed to thrive. Our projections onto others are magical gateways if we navigate them consciously. It also opens the doorway to our true power, soft power, where Shakti flows in orgasmic pulsing waves of coming together and meeting in true intimacy. And that is the deepest fear and resistance to meet the feelings and agonizing grief of our inner child and our innermost soul, to feel all the ways we think we have been separated from love and are not worthy of being loved and cherished. It takes great daring to trust again, to open the crack in our heart and let love back in. That passage speaks all the words that I want to say and I need to feel and I am hoping to experience and I know I'm nowhere perfect or close to experiencing this level of love but I am using these moments of hurt and darkness and struggle to continue opening my heart even though I really don't want to <laughs> and it hurts it's a it can be a painful process and i think that needs to be acknowledged that healing isn't easy that's why a lot of people don't choose to heal healing takes work it takes consistency it takes the desire to push through the pain to push through the discomfort to push through these things and sit in inner truth and the choice to continuously make mistakes and to fuck up and to feel these deep, hard feelings. That's what it takes to come to a space of healing and wholeness and love and truth and the space of ourselves. I wanted to show up in my way to share that with others, to share my healing process in real time a year ago when I came home from Guatemala, I was in Guatemala for 10 days and when I came home, I, I had cracked open so much in Guatemala and experienced this deep new version of love in my life that coming home from that felt like a heartbreak and I found myself in a spiral of depression and darkness and just this stuck feeling. I felt like my life wasn't moving in the way I wanted to. It just felt very like stagnant and dark and yucky. And I looked into the mirror at myself one day and I was like, I have so many tools to work through this. I just need to apply them. I need, I needed that self-discipline. And I made a promise to myself that I would take those tools and apply them and I sat with myself and basically like what came through me was this little tool that I call return to self that really just pulled me out of that darkness and as I'm descending into another part of the spiral of darkness the part of life because life is Life isn't just light, it's darkness and light. And I don't think that darkness will ever just go away. I think I get to learn how to work with it and not let it break me and choose to use it as an opportunity to open up to more love. And so this was a little tool that I created that goes through the chakra system in a spiral and um, has questions to dig into and ask myself where I'm at so I can connect with my own medicine, so I can connect with my body, I can connect with my mind, I can connect with my spirit. So it can be used for either healing 
or creation or both. I feel like it's all in the same realm. And I wanted to start sharing that process in real time. Last year, in the beginning of this year, I took several people through that tool. I did a group session and I did a few one-on-ones and it was so profound. And at this time of my life, I feel called, instead of working with people one-on-one or in a group setting, I wanted to share it through video and art and photography, how I go through the process. So I wanted to create free access for people to go through this during the winter season. I'll probably start sharing the videos in January and hopefully it can be just a valuable tool to have out in the collective. And if anything, it'll be a way to hold myself accountable for doing this work for myself. And coming back to myself and kind of not letting this dark spiral that I'm experiencing to consume me or take me over because I have experienced times where it has gotten like that. And so yeah, that is where I am at right now. That is what I want to share. And if you watched this whole video, I'm so grateful. Um, as always, anything I share online is really just my own reflections, my own life experience, my own thoughts. Um, I 100% acknowledge that my thoughts and beliefs and life experience is completely different reality than somebody else's experience. And in no way am I saying this is the one and only truth. This is my truth. This is what has guided me and helped me. And I'm still learning and growing and expanding. And I just hope that um, whoever resonates with this information or their soul needs this information for whatever reason, it can find them and connect with them. But first and foremost, I'm doing this for myself. This is my process. This is my healing journey. Um, I would love to hear if you have any thoughts or you resonate or you have things to add to these thought processes. I would love to hear that in the comment section. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm just so grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that I'm here. I'm grateful for this life, no matter how dark and dense it can be. I'm grateful that I get to sit right here and be able to share these things with others, no matter how messy and vulnerable and imperfect it is. I'm here to stand in this truth of who I am right now in this moment. And I feel called to just document it and share it for whatever reason. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day.